Hey everybody, it's Glenn back with another Clash Royale analysis video. We broke down game one of the 1v1 set of the Grand Finals of the No Tilt League Special Edition featuring Ruben and Anibon. This is game number two, and I really want to forward to just the one card that was just really, I mean, it, it was unbelievable. There's one card you're going to see that just... Well, it just played an unbelievable part in, in this game. But we'll get there when we get there. So, right now, Ruben plays Cage. And Anime goes with Dark Prince. Now, it did, it did not look like this Dark Prince was going to go to the Cage. Because it looked like it was played just out of the range. But we've seen some wild stuff in the past. So, spend two Elixir to bring out this Ice Golem. It's fine. I, I think it's I think it was fine in the beginning. And then now you got an Ice Wiz and we begin our pushes. Ruben's got a dark print, so it looks like it was gonna be a mirror. This was a nice log to save this dark prince. And this was a really, really great play by Anabon to play this world giant. Now normally most most world giants are played at the tower. But the way he timed it, if you look, we'll rewind it here. He timed it. That log was great, but it also slowed it down so that when that Royal Giant came down here, this Dark Prince had to focus on the Royal Giant. And now this Mecha Minion will be able to get some shots in. Now, obviously, this Dark Prince is not going to attack the Mecha Minion, but it now becomes a great support for this Royal Giant who can easily dispatch of this or at least do some damage to this Goblin Brawler. While this Princess is taking care of that, Dark Prince finishes off those Skeletons with the Ice Wizard. And now it's on about turn to push. Ice Golem starts, stops the Dark Prince. And that Ice Wizard just did not get over the line. So that once right here, this Princess would have been attacking it. It's not yet, so that's why we see the snowball, only two elixir, and now we begin our reset, which allows Anabon to drop a cage because he got the 10 elixir. So this sets up the situation for what Anibon wants to do. It, it seems like now we're playing on Anibon's um, clock right now. Ruben brings out an Inferno Dragon because it's slow. So by the time it gets to the bridge, it should meet either the Brawler or the Mecha Minion, which meets the Mecha Minion first, and then does some damage to the Brawler. Those archers come in right at the bridge. I thought that was really weird. Now let's rewind that for a second here. Because those archers could have been played somewhere around here to the right of this Princess Tower to support this Dark Prince. Instead, they get played right at the bridge. It was kind of like, I don't know if if Ruben was expecting Ice Wizard to be closer to this spot where the Inferno Dragon was because of, because, I mean, yeah, because of the Inferno Dragon, which if it gets closer to as it gets closer to the tower, it's going to do uh, unbelievable damage um, when left alone. So I was figuring that's probably why he played it so close up here. Or maybe he an did anticipate the cage being dropped right here. I think somebody also questioned it here if you look at the Hog Rider emo. It was just really... I, I was kind of confused when I was looking at this because... I mean, obviously, he's playing Graveyard as well. Trying to put pressure on Anibon's tower. But it just seemed really out of place when I look at it here. Again, it was probably because he thought this Ice Wizard was going to be played right here. He was trying to support this Inferno Tower. I mean, Inferno Dragon. Uh, I, it, was, it, was, uh, it was a strange one. So, we'll have to... Maybe we'll have to ask him one day if we ever meet him in person why... Those uh, archers were played right here. But they meet the cage. Everybody 
says hello to this brawler. And so now we have this Inferno Dragon, which has to deal with nobody because it got taken care of. And now we have a Royal Giant who's about to get dropped in on the tower and it's going to be making its big push. So here's where things get really hairy right here. I thought this was amazing. Here comes this Inferno Dragon. I'm going to rewind this again because what I want you to do is, is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let the game go to the finish line. And all I want you to do is just watch this Inferno Dragon from beginning to the rest of this game. Because this was incredible. So right here, we have a Royal Giant, an Ice Wizard that pretty much doesn't matter. It's out, it's out, of, uh, it's out of sight right now. We have this Dark Prince, which looks like it's about to smack this Dark Prince right here. So it's all on this Inferno Dragon to stop this push by this Royal Giant and whatever else comes in to support it. And like I said, from this point forward, I'm just going to let this game go and you can wa watch this Inferno Dragon from start to finish and then we'll go back and, and take a look at what happened here. So this Inferno Dragon does its job, takes out the Royal Giant. Gets hit by lightning and stops this Dark Prince. Gets tornadoed. Still alive. Eh, the log is, is whatever. Here comes the Dark Prince. Takes care of that. Mega Minion. Takes care of that. And all the way through, finish off the Ice Wizard. Gets some damage on the King Tower, and that is the game. I have watched this several times trying to break this down, try to understand exactly what was going on, and every time I've watched this, I just could not believe how that Inferno Dragon was able to stay alive all the way to the finish. It was just incredible. So, we're here. Let's rewind this, and let's break this down. So, we're here, and Obviously, Ruben has to play this right now because if he doesn't play this Inferno Dragon, he's got nothing else really to support it. Archers, I believe, are out of cycle on this turn, and Cage is the next card in the cycle. So he he didn't have the he didn't have Cage with him at this. Um, he didn't have Cage when he dropped an Inferno Dragon. Now he has Cage, which means now he can play it. So this is actually a really good. It was actually a really good play to wait. Just let this Inferno Dragon do its job. And then it does its job double time. Now it has support with this Ice Golem and Dark Prince ahead of it. The Tornado, which received its change for Season 11, didn't take it out. Now, I, I would say this. There was a last-minute change by Supercell. In the rework of Tornado. I think. Uh, let me rewind it to, to the point where it did. In this change. In this last minute change. Originally. The damage. The, the damage. Of what a tornado does. Was. Going to increase by 100%. So it was going to do double what it did. Originally in the past seasons. In the last moment before the update, Supercell changed the percentage increase of damage to 65%. If it was 100%, this Inferno Dragon is gone from this game. And now everything changes in terms of how this ending... I mean, we may still be... These guys may still be playing um, right now. Or we may be going to tiebreakers. Just... Based on that change. That's how close this, that tornado was to taking out this Inferno Dragon. And instead, now it has support with this Ice Golem and Dark Prince. And Archers. And if you look right here. Now obviously this, this um, Giant Snowball is going to the back. But 
this dark prince has it's not going to attack the inferno dragon so it's going to have some some time to to do some damage here there's nothing that's going to be even focusing on the inferno dragon because this ice was has to stop this these skeletons uh from the graveyard so there's one and then this is the last chance to stop this inferno dragon but guess what this mega minion is playing right here so it only could take out the archers first and then the mecha minion i mean the inferno dragon which it doesn't and it gets damage on the king tower and that is the game i am just blown away by what that inferno dragon did in those final moments to to seal this win for ruben i mean we can watch this again and I just am a mind blown of of what it went through. I mean, it it took all kinds of damage and just barely stayed alive. It was like one HP left. Lightning. Tornado. And just really, I mean incredible for it to to just stay alive that long mega minion was the last chance and nope that was it everybody else does their job the tower's gone poison was the last card in ruben's lineup and that was it i mean it was it was just amazing and it shows like these these players are just so well advanced in in this game it was unbelievable to keep cards alive as long as they do i mean it's just we're, we're gonna see this going forward where cards are gonna be staying alive a lot longer than 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 they should especially in the case of this inferno dragon so congratulations to ruben on finishing the the win congratulations to team queso on claiming the no tilt leaks special edition championship and we got no tilt league coming up in just a few days the new the new league with the promotion relegation and all that and it's going to be just as exciting oh, hopefully you get as exciting matches as the the games we've had um throughout this uh, special edition so i'm gonna end the video right here hopefully uh we get some more exciting games going forward and I'll be around to uh, break them down. So thanks for watching. Be sure to hit the like button wherever you're watching this. Be sure to hit the subscribe wherever you're watching this. And I'll see you in the next video.